Do you know that you can get free lithium salts from devices like this? These are disposable smoke machines, but people do use them and once they're done with them, they throw them usually on the street. So if you find one, you can pick it up and I'll show you how you can extract the lithium cell inside and use it in your project. This video is sponsored by Altium 365 and its great electronic part search engine Octopart. Octopart is a real-time part selection assistant and search engine that is used as primary source for component data in Altium Designer and Altium 365. Octopart gives you the most up-to-date part data like specs, data sheets, and CAD models right in the design environment so you can focus on your designs. With the built-in stock level tracking, you can always be one step ahead of the current supply risks and get automated notifications for low stock levels. Keep your design momentum going by having the right component info handy in the design environment and trust Octopart to recommend the best components to fit your criteria so you can focus on problem solving and creative thinking. Visit the link in the video description to get your Altium Designer free trial along with a free subscription to Altium 365 and visit octopart.com to find the right components for your next project. And here are the devices that I managed to find out on the street. Actually, these two were given to me by some friends. And the way that they work, once a suction is detected, there is a little pressure sensor here. There's a hole on the back and a hole on the front. Once a vacuum is detected, then that pressure sensor activates uh, the heating element that uh, heats the liquid and vapor comes out. Once they're done, basically they're thrown in the garbage, even though they do have a lithium cell inside. So today I'm going to show you how you can open up uh, devices like this and we'll salvage the cell. And then I'll show you how you can use a module like this to then use that cell in your project. Now, before going any further with disassembling these devices, it's recommended that you wear gloves because of all the liquid that might be possibly still inside the devices. Uh, so let's grab a plier and start disassemble the devices. I'm gonna start with this one. I'll take the orange one on the side and you can easily open it by twisting this cap at the front and probably, oh, I'm gonna need, okay, now, and probably this cap on the bottom, if you can grab hold of it. It's better if you have bigger pliers, but I'll think I'll do with this one. Okay. And we're in and inside we have the pressure sensor that I was telling you about. Let's try and get a bit closer in that. And here inside, this is the pressure sensor. And it, it will detect a drop in pressure once suction is detected on the front. Uh, let's see which way we can remove this. I'll grab a stick. So I'm using a bamboo skewer to try and poke out the contents from inside. And I think that we can already see the battery here. We have some sticker here that we're gonna remove. Let's try and... There is this washer. This is the cartridge with the liquid. Okay, let's get some tweezers and the whole thing just slides out. This is a metal tube that we're left with. Maybe you can want to reuse that as well. And there is a foam on the end that isolates the battery from the case. Let's remove that. Okay, so the device is now apart. And you can see, here's the lithium cell. It's JS13300, 1.4 watt hours, 3.7 volts, 400 milliamps, milliamp hours. 
and we have positive on this side and negative on this side and the circuit we have positive coming in to the pressure sensor as well as negative but negative is then also sent to the hidden element that's submerged inside the liquid here in this reservoir and once that detects pressure it activates uh, the voltage here to the heating element and that vaporizes the liquid now we don't need anything else from this device except for the battery so let's cut the wires and I'll use some paper towels to remove any residues of the liquid from the battery. Okay, so I was interested to see the construction of the heater and it's as simple as it can get. We have this non-flammable material that's that we have wire wrapped around with some wick inside that soaks up the, the liquid and that wire is just attached is coiled up inside and attached directly to the battery. So when current runs to that, that wire gets heat up and vaporizes the liquid. So this is basically really simple construction. And because we got the battery out from the first device, now let's jump into the second device and see. It, it's gonna be probably the similar construction, but let's see the dimensions of the battery that we're gonna get from it. This one we're gonna open using the same principle and it seems that this one was glued on so once I twist it, it broke off. No worries. Let's try removing this back. Okay, so this one is a bit more challenging to open. Okay, so we're in at least on one of the sides. Let's go in a bit closer. Here is the end cup. Here is the pressure sensor. We see basically exactly the same as on the other one. Let's see if pulling on this. I can see the battery inside, so I don't want to accidentally short it. Let's try and remove this cap from here. Seems to be a rubber part. Can we actually pull on that? Okay, it seems that we can push on it. You want to be gentle because we don't want to short anything and possibly cause a fire. You can see that the battery terminals are very exposed. Okay, that seems to have done the trick. And on the end here, we probably have just the heating element and the reservoir. Yes. Okay, so everything is out of the tube. What do we have here? We have an IP8T1437D3R2. Again, 3.7 volt, 1.48 watt hours, 400 milliamps. And date of manufacture is 2022, April 20th. And on this one, unlike the other one, um, which we had positive and negative side, uh, on this one, we have positive and negative both coming in on the same side. Uh, and then the wires and the heating element are actually on their own PCB. 
you can see that the wires come to a PCB, which is basically a breakout, and that makes sure that there is no short circuit inside when assembling this. The reservoir with the liquid is here. We don't need that, so I'm going to cut it off. And the whole battery is wrapped with captain tape that keeps everything neat and tight. And this one was actually much tighter than the other one in the case, and it was much harder to, to be removed, but hopefully that should be relatively easy now. I can just cut off the captain tape. And that exposes the battery contacts. I'm gonna cut off the wires. Okay, let's release it from here. And let's cut off this last wire. And here are the two batteries that we were able to salvage from the devices. Both of them are exact in the in the capacity, so 400 milliamp hours, and they should be fairly substantial to use in some low power projects. And I'm gonna show you in a moment how you can use them in your projects. Uh, I went ahead and disassembled the cartridge from the second device, and you can see on this one that it's even simpler. So it's just a piece of cloth that's wrapped around this resistive wire that is then used as a heater. So basically really simple devices. Now that we've removed the batteries from their uh, devices, the first thing that we need to do is to check their voltage and make sure that they are not over discharged, that they are safe to use. And I have the multimeter on voltage. I'm gonna first measure this one and I'm getting 3.47, which is okay. So in general, this battery, this type of battery should not be discharged more than about uh, three volts. They can handle usually down to 2.5, but it's not really recommended. And let's check the other one. And we have 3.31 volts, which is perfectly fine. So now in order to use these batteries, Option number one is that we use them as replacement batteries in devices that use similar batteries like this, or we can use a board like this. This is the TP4056, the lithium charger and protection board, but we need to do a modification on the board so it's safe to use with this battery. Now the TP4056 boards come in a different flavors, uh, specifically with different USB uh, charging port. This one is USB-C, uh, as you can see here, and this one is micro USB. And you can basically use any of those, but we need to do a small modification on them in order to be able to use them safely with the uh, batteries that we extracted. The problem is that this boards come preset for charging uh, 18650s which can charge with a current of up to one amp. And that is defined basically on their capacity. These batteries are relatively small and we can, pro we should probably use something like 200 or 300 milliamps to, to safely charge them. And in order to do that, we will need to change one of the resistors that's here on the board. That's this one here, R3, and this one here. And depending on the version that you're gonna get, that, that might be a bit tricky. As you can see here on this one with the micro USB, the resistor is a bit bigger. And I think it will be manageable uh, to just replace it with the regular resistor. While on this one, they've used the very small SMD resistors and it might be really difficult to for us to remove that resistor and to replace it. On this one, the value here is I can get it to focus very well on the, the resistor, but the written text on it is one to two, which means 1.2 kilohms. Uh, and that's set for a charging current on of one amp. And that's the maximum that this board can, can deliver. In order for us to lower the charging current, we need to replace that resistor based on the chart that I'm gonna place here on the screen. 
and to get about 250 milliamps of charging current we need a 5 kilo ohms resistor so I'm gonna desolder this one and I'm gonna replace it with the regular uh, just a quarter of a watt resistor because they don't have any SMDs I will replace it with a regular resistor and then we'll connect it to the battery so we can charge it okay so that was not difficult at all I just used remove the resistor you can see it here this is the original resistor that was in place it's just microscopic and the one on the USB-C version it's even smaller so that would be a lot more difficult I recommend that you go for the micro USB and I first solder the resistor a bit out on the board with the legs extended and then just I just fold it over so it's nice and compact because the size of the resistor is much larger than the original one and I didn't have exactly um, 5 kilo ohms so I used 5.6 kilo ohms now I'll solder in one of the batteries and we see we'll see how that behaves and we'll see what charging current are we getting okay so here I have the module connected to the battery and I've broken one of the connections going through the battery because I wanted to measure the current that this um, device is charging I'm outputting 5 volts here from the power bank and that goes to the charger and then through the meter which measures around 117 uh, milliamp of current and that's perfectly safe rate that you can charge the small lithium cells at I mean it's gonna take a bit of time but it's better to be safe and that will extend the battery life if you want to have a slightly higher charging current then you can replace that resistor with uh, a value that's uh, lower than 5.6 k 4.7 let's say and you're gonna raise that current up and now here is the final piece it's now all soldered together I can charge this battery from any USB and I can safely use this battery in any project because I can solder to these output tabs and always get the voltage where the cell is protected from uh, under voltage and it's never discharged under its nominal value the current the resistor that we added to lower the, the charging current to be safe for the battery and now we should expect some longer life with the battery instead of just using one amp as charging current that's all for today i hope that you found this project a, a little interesting uh, maybe in the future we can see some project where i'm using one of these batteries and for that, please subscribe. And if you like this video, then be sure to check this one out where I make some power bank out of mobile phone batteries, which I also think that you're gonna find interesting. Thank you, and I see you in the next one.